Hi there. This is a quick, short topic video looking at the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. So the Keynesian aggregate supply curve is non-linear. The elasticity of the supply curve will change at different levels of national output. So let's work our way through it and see if it uh, makes sense to you. Let's take, for example, uh, a shift in aggregate demand, perhaps caused by an increase in exports, which starts at a low level of national production, GDP. So we move our equilibrium output from AD, uh, from Y1 to Y2 as the aggregate demand curve shifts. Now we've drawn the aggregate supply curve there as perfectly elastic. In other words, the economy has a huge amount of spare capacity of land, of labour, of capital resources to be able to meet an increase in demand quickly and easily without there being a, a significant increase in cost and prices. So when the economy is operating with plenty of spare capacity, for example, coming out of recession, you'd normally expect the aggregate supply curve to be fairly elastic. But then look further to the right and see what happens as aggregate demand continues to increase to much higher levels. The aggregate supply curve now starts to become inelastic. So for example, an increase in AD from AD3 to AD4 and again from AD4 to AD5. In this situation, we see an increase in the general price level because the aggregate supply curve is now drawn as being inelastic. This is because the economy is getting close to its capacity limits. If you like, it's getting near to its supply side potential. When the aggregate supply curve becomes vertical, then the economy is said to have achieved a position of full employment of factor resources. In the labour market, for example, you might define full employment as a position where everybody who is willing and able and actively looking for work at the current wage rate is, uh, is available, it, it can find work. And the remaining unemployment is essentially frictional. So at this point, the economy has reached a capacity position. So YFE is full employment. If we're at a position, for example, where we have aggregate demand AD1, quite a low level of total demand, then the equilibrium output is below full employment. And we would say that the economy is operating well within its production possibility frontier, and it's operating with a negative output gap. So let's just go through this again in terms of text. If you want to read through the text, uh, press the pause button if you want a bit more time on this. When there is a lot of spare capacity in the economy, aggregate supply will be elastic. Any increase in demand can easily be met by expanding production. And there's no real threat of demand pull inflation. As an economy grows and expands and moves closer to its PPF, the elasticity of aggregate supply may fall. The amount of spare capacity diminishes. There could be some diminishing returns in production. Perhaps some supply bottlenecks in the supply of key raw materials or component parts. Uh, labour shortages may start to become a, a problem, particularly, for example, businesses complaining they can't get hold of the skilled workers they need, for example, in car making or in construction. And when aggregate supply becomes perfectly inelastic, the economy has reached its full capacity level, equivalent to being on the PPF. At this point, if aggregate demand was to increase still further, the main threat would be just an increase in, in inflation with little or no extra increase in, in real national output. So this has just been a quick look at the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, and I hope you found it useful.